All right, for this week's flop, we're going to revisit a uh, an original pattern. This is one that I did. I think this was the second video that I put out. It was the Rainbow Riffle Special. Um, has since really done well for us. I mean, we caught a lot of fish off of this pattern. There's a few minor tweaks that we did on this one that makes it swim a little bit different, makes it a little bit easier to tie. Um, as you can see, there's a pile of tenant two sitting here for the commercial thing just got done with six dozen rainbow riffles and um, I should have this one down I should be able to tie it in about 10 seconds but this is now my fifth take on this pattern to try and get it ready for video so we'll see how it goes get this one out of the vise and get going uh, to start on this one we're gonna go with a uh, MFC uh, Gallop streamer hook, articulated streamer hook. This is a size four. If you want to comp, uh, Daiichi 2461 would work. We're going to do this in the uh, sunburst yellow and brown today. This is one of my favorite color combinations for the barely legal. This this uh, this pattern is very similar to the barely legal minus. There, there's no weight. This one is. Um, completely weightless and there's a few different things that we do on the body on this one so we'll get get to those as we go but there are a few minor tweaks on this one the way that I tie it now is the way that I did on the original pattern so to start we're just gonna go with a tail on this and this is the sunburst yellow tail There we go, everything wants to sit well for us there. Now we're going to take two copper strands of flashaboo. We're going to run this, double it over. We're going to go two on the camera side, or four on the camera side, four on the... on my side. We'll get this thrown in here. Everything's sitting how we want it. One, two, three loose wraps. One, two... Get back here. One, two, three. Everything looks good. Just trim that off. Damn scissors. Trim that just short of the length of the tail. There's a couple there not sitting how we want it to. Alright, everything looks good there. Now what we're going to do is we're going to take a brown and we're going to go right over top of that yellow. Um, this is an X Select brown marabou. I, for some reason, I just don't care for that X Select at all. It just I don't know. The blood quills are the way to go on this one. But I'm running short on material, so that's what we're going to use. We're going to lay this right over top, and this tail is going to be a little bit more sparse than what I care for it to be. But it'll work. I'd like that to be just a little bit thicker. So there we go. There's the tail portion of the rainbow riffle. Now what I'm going to do is just to add, for, just to add some taper, I'm going to run this both plumes right up to the front uh, if it wants to cooperate there take that up to the front and we'll go ahead and trim that everything's pretty clean as it sits mm -hmm. now we'll take this to the back and now this is something different that I want to show you than I, I didn't explain it too well on the original pattern so I'm going to zoom out a little bit I didn't explain this as well as I would like to on the original and there are some things that I've learned um, after tying uh, you know a couple dozen of these things that, that make it easier so this is what I have right here this is the body it's going to have this hair's dub and the uh, Sanyo shaggy dub 
as I explained in the original video, but there are some things that make this a lot easier. You can use this uh, just regular straight ice dub, but the hair's dub does grab a little bit better. So I, I like to use this a lot more, and I'm going to go ahead and get both portions, or I'm going to get the front and back hook ready on this one. So we'll do both of them at one time and just show you the the difference of what we do what what I do with these now as to what I did before so all I do is I take this hair's ice dub and I just make a little taper out of this I just make a little V to where this sits just like this you can see how it's sitting there I mean there's just a little taper it's just a minor minor taper that's gonna be a little bit longer than what I want that'll be my front hook so this will be my back hook, and I'm just taking this hair's, hair's dub, and I'm just kind of shaping this, just getting it how I want it, everything sitting. It's, it's really kind of sparse. Keep this portion more sparse than what you would on a regular body, because we're going to add a little bit to it. And then we're going to take this shaggy dub, and you can see I'm just going to pick this out, I'm just taking the longest portions. I know you really can't pick that up too well. I'm going to take the longest portions and I'm going to put this on the body. And it's the the end of the shaggy dub is going to sit right in the center of the body. So I have it coming out both ways. So when I throw this in my dubbing loop and I spin it, it's going to give the effect of a, like a schlopping or something like that to where it's going to stick out. But this stuff has more motion than a schlopping. Like it'll actually sit and pulsate a little bit almost more like a marabou than it is anything so I'm going to throw probably a dozen strands of this shaggy dub right down the center of this hair's ice dub and I'm going to need a couple more pieces on this before when I did this I just took it and I threw it down and wherever it laid it laid and uh, it was it was effective but I'd wind up getting a lot more just twists and turns through this shaggy dub and I'd have to take a lot of it with my scissors and cut it and it just wouldn't be the length that I wanted it and it just didn't turn out right so this this made it a little bit easier now in using this hairs dub what I do is put the first portion down and then I take just a little bit more and I run it right over the top that way, I can pick this stuff up, I can maneuver it, I can manipulate it how I want. None of the shaggy dub goes anywhere. I can throw it wherever I want on the bench. Everything's good as to where if I did just the, the ice dub and just the one layer, then stuff was all over the place. When I put it in the dubbing loop, I, I wasn't able to have any control over it. So I add this second layer to it, and it's almost using like a uh, like a dubbing brush, but you're not using the length of it. The principle is the same to where you know you have a layer of solid, you have your your median, and then you have another layer of solid over top of it. So it just makes it easier to work with and easier to manipulate as you go through. So that's my that's my two cents on the on the shaggy dub and the hair's ice dub. So now I'm gonna get ready, I'm gonna create my dubbing loop. And I haven't bought I haven't bought into the uh, dubbing brushes yet. I, I I just haven't gotten there. I I don't know. Maybe, maybe after after some time I'll I'll embrace it and start using them but for the most part I just don't like the way that they work just yet I haven't got to to where it works for my application so I'm just going to continue to do them this way for now and maybe later you'll, maybe in a year you'll see a video of me doing those brushes but for now we're doing the old school way so now I'm going to pick out this I'm going to pick out this material getting all of this hairs ear or this hairs dub out and you can see that I still have the the shaggy dub sitting how I want it. It's still throughout the entire 
portion of my body and then as I spin this this shaggy dub is laying and coming out and giving me a little bit of extra bulk a little bit of extra motion there we go there's a couple of these that are going to be a little bit long that we're going to want to trim out but there we go we got the shaggy dub sitting how we want it now we're going to add a little bit of bulk to this so we're going to go with some more marabou and when I did this one originally I, I used really really short sections of marabou and it looked fine it fished fine it just wasn't as good as what it is now to be honest um, so I'm going to take this a quarter of the way back to where my tail is I'm going to lay this marabou in it's going to sit down and all of this does is it fills it fills out it gives me more bulk and it also gives me so much more motion when this thing is actually in the water so I'm going to set the yellow right where it is and get that secured in place you can see the shaggy dub still laying out I have some of that getting a little bit too long on me there that looks better so there we have that now also the original on this one when I did my lateral lines I used this Steve Farrar's uh, flash blend and I found that when when these materials or when these hooks do file on themselves it catches this flash blend and it just kind of sticks and it's not very often but when it does stick I mean it's a little bit tough to pry the two apart so I went away from that I got rid of them what I use for the lateral line now is just this um, ice wing this is minnow back that I use for the brown trout version and I'm just going to take a little bit of this and I'm going to run it laterally on both sides more sparse on the back hook than the front hook just just as always you know I mean the, typically the, the front hook has a little bit more bulk and a little bit more material than the back so getting down to the end of this here different section here. There we go, that looks better. I found that it's that it's just easier if you wet this stuff beforehand to work with it. It'll keep all of these you know, onesies and twosies of material just flying all over the place. And it's easier to control if you wet this stuff. And then when you're ready to cut this, don't cut it straight. Don't just snip the material. Just kind of push your push your uh, scissors right through it. It's not a flush cut. Everything's you you don't want a nice clean cut. All you want is just a nice taper going back through this. And you can see some of it's going to go through the tail and everything. So it's going to kind of marry into that. And then the last portion for this back hook is I'm going to take, well, let me find a piece of marabou that I like here. I guess this will work. I'm going to take just a little bit of brown. Well, I don't like that too much. Lay this up, see if it's gonna work. Nope. No good. We're getting down to the bottom on this brown marabou, so may take it a little bit. May not look as good as what I would like it. We'll see. No, that looks fine right there. So I'm gonna take a nice thick piece of marabou and I'm going to lay this right over top and as I progress forward I like this to just get more 
I'd, I'd, I'd like more bulk as I go forward. So when you set your material out, set your bulkiest pieces or your 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 pieces that are just more webby. Set them off to the side. Set them to the right as you know you're going through and everything is going to be set how you want it on the bench so you're not going to be mistakenly taking one piece and using that for a back hook where it should be on your front. I know a lot of times when I get the when I get the tie in, in bulk I'll just go picking through pieces and then you know I'll, I'll pick from one pile and then I'll look at it when I get to the front hook and it's like man that piece should have been in the back. Um, this way, if you put everything to your right and only pick from that pile on the front hooks, it'll make them a little more. It'll give you a little more consistency, consistency throughout your hook, throughout your patterns. But there we go. There's the back half of the updated Rainbow Riffle. We're gonna get that one out of the vise pan up that I just dropped here and get our size 2 in. Um, like I said, this is a size 2 uh, MFC streamer hook and I can't figure out where I put my dang... there it is. This is just a uh, UTC... I think it's actually a 70. It's pretty thin thread. But I'm just using this as always. Instead of using the gel spun, I use this to connect my front and back hook. As you can see, we put a lot of wraps down, and I don't want to use the. I don't want to waste gel spun on just connecting a hook. I'm going to run back over top of it here eventually. But um, before when I was well, every video before this one, I always set my connecting wire in tied one portion over, wrapped it back through, and put my bead and my back hook on. I've always watched Kelly do this, and I've always watched him do it this way. For some reason, I was never able to do it until I started tying in bulk tying commercially, and seeing this, it saves me so much time. Instead of putting each hook in individually, putting my wire in, you know, and then taking the hook out, setting it off to the side. This just saves me a pile of time doing it this way, and I'm finally actually able to do it and get this thing setting right. So I double this over, I give it, give it a little kink, and then just throw my one bead over top of there, and actually able to get it setting right. For the longest time, I wasn't able to do it. For whatever reason, it's probably just because I didn't dedicate any time to actually figuring out how to do it. I just got frustrated watching it and seeing that it wasn't setting how I wanted it to. But now, after doing, you know, maybe 12 dozen or more of these, I think I finally got it. So, I'm changing the way that I tie in the articulation wire. There we go, everything sets good. You can see I have both portions setting over. Both both wires are going straight through. And now this wire that I have is following the hook back here, so everything's setting how I want it. I have just a little bit more than the length of the bead with my loop going back. Everything sets pretty good. And now I go through Doing it individually, doing fly by fly, you don't notice a big difference. But when I do these, um, when I was tying these uh, tenant twos, when I was tying the rainbow riffles before in bulk, it, it just saves an immense amount of time. So if you're tying multiple patterns of one color, do yourself a favor. Take the time to in, in, invest the time in actually... Learning how to make this work, it make it, it saves you a, a ton of time. It really does. So I'm just going to double these over. I'm gonna bring the wire around. There we 
go. So we're just doubling this over. And you can see from here forward, this is going to be the head of the fly. I don't have any material. I don't have any thread going there. That's going to be the head of this fly. Before when I did this pattern, it was it was really sloppy in the front. And I just learned over, over the last two years, however long it's been, to really work with this um, laser dub. And it just makes it so much cleaner, so much easier to work with. And it just gives you a better profile on this. I'll explain that as I go through as well. Um, before when I did this pattern, what I did was I took uh, just aftershaft of like, whether it's marabou or shalopin or whatever, and I used that for my skirt. This just makes it so much cleaner using two really sparse pieces of marabou. So I'm going to take two pieces of this sunburst yellow and I'm going to run this back. I'll wet this. And I'm going to run this back probably the one third point of the last piece that I tied in. So hopefully that shows up on the camera there. You can see this. Bring it back to my side. This is probably about the one-third point right there. This is going to be the portion of my skirt. Um, it's not going to be anything else than cover. That's all it is. But this just looks so much cleaner once everything dries and it's not as bulky. And it really gives you a nice cover for this hook. It gives you a nice cover for your connection point. And really it just makes a nice clean transition as to where before, like I said, when I was using the aftershaft, it was just a really bulky, really just sloppy connection between the two. This looks a lot better. So this is what I go with now. Um, that'll be a good overwing right there. Now what I'm going to take is I'm just going to go with a little bit of brown over the top. The dog's thirsty apparently. I'm going to take this brown and this is off of a bugger pack portion here. And it doesn't have to be a ton, it doesn't have to be a lot. Just enough to give me a little bit of cover here and it's going to go a little bit past the third it's a little bit longer than what I use on the tank. Okay. Isn't that enough water? Go ahead, huh? It's just a little bit more than what I use on the yellow. And it's just going to marry right back into this overwing that I have on the back hook. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to come underneath this, make sure I get one or two secure wraps. That way this stuff's not going to flip around and uh, rotate on me. Get out of there. I'm going to take this stuff up to the front. This is going to help with my bulk. This is going to help with my taper. And I'm going to trim this right off. Bring this to the back. Now I'm ready for the body on this front hook. Same thing, I'm stopping right where I left off before. I don't want any material going past that front portion. I want everything, that's all going to be laser dub. That's all going to be the head of this hook, or the head of this fly. I'm going to spin this around, everything's ready for the dubbing loop. And now I have the same portion that I tied before, that I put together before. This is the hair's dub and the shaggy dub that I'm going to use for the body on this one. Give it a quick spin, pick all of this stuff out. Try and get, get it set in all one direction. You don't want a ton of bulk with this hair's dub. 
and then get one two wraps make sure this is secure if you have any loose sections on this as you go wrapping it to the front just take just pause real quick give it a quick pinch make sure that everything's secure everything's nice and clean going to the front There we go. We got the Harris dub. We got the Shaggy dub sitting how we want it. There's a couple of these that are always going to be a little bit longer. Um, just give them a quick pinch, quick, quick uh, cut, just to make sure that they're not going to interfere with that back hook at all. This one's going to be a little bit long. There we go. Everything looks good. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to take our best piece or our bulkiest piece on this marabou. And we're going to set this underneath. We're going to measure this out. We're going to flip the hook upside down. We're going to measure this out to where it's going to marry back almost to the halfway point of our skirt a quarter at the at the minimum halfway point at the most just get that secure flip this around and then you can go ahead and trim this off at this point we know there's not going to be any more material coming forward and this is all going to be the laser dub head so I mean you can make your you can make your uh, securing wraps all the way up to the eye at this point There, when we peel this down, peel it back, you can see to where that's just going to marry into that back section. We still have the shaggy dub, we still have our laser, or our uh, hair's, dub, hair's ear, hair's dub, still nice and clean, nice and smooth going through there. Um, what I did on the original on this one was I had this lateral scale, I tied it in twice, I tied it in on the back hook and the front. Now I just do this on the front hook and I run it halfway back to the tail. It's, it cuts the time, time down. It, it's cleaner. It really does look a lot better this way, just having the one lateral line going through there. Sometimes they don't marry up depending on uh, the materials that are in the way for tying them in. Uh, sometimes they just... don't cooperate in all honesty and they're just a mess so doing just the one lateral line going all the way back alleviates that problem with the two not cooperating um, we're going to take oh boy I'm really getting down the end of the pack on this ice wing we're going to take a little bit of this and a little does go a long way as always when I'm working with this stuff I eat more than what I actually get on the hook try and wet this stuff down take it just past get that tied in take it just past your connection between the two hooks so right here's my connection what I'm going to do is just take it just past it and I'm just pushing my scissors right through there. Not everything's even, not everything is clean, but that's what you want on this. I mean, you don't want a nice clean break between the two. All this is is just a little bit of flash that connects your front and back hook. And as we set our marabou stacks on here, it, it winds up being internal flash. If you have a nice clean break on this, it really sets out and just doesn't quite give you the overall look that you're after. With the uneven breaks through it, it just it, it looks a lot better in my opinion. So 
don't give it that nice clean cut. Just give it that nice push through with your scissors. Everything looks pretty well, pretty good at that point. Same thing with the brown. We're going over top of that after we put our lateral line and our uh, ice wing fiber in. We're just throwing this over the top and this is just going to give a cover. It's going to set that ice wing down where we want it. And then the last thing that we have on this is the little bit of uh, Senyo's laser dub. I'm going to use this fusion, fusion dub and the yellow to marry up to match this sunburst marabou that I have. This stuff, they're getting really creative with the names that they have out there these days. This is called Eat a Peach. I don't know what the hell that means, but it's, uh, <laughs> I thought it was a cool color. And if I use two yellow to one Eat a Peach, um, it gives me that sunburst color that I'm after. So there's the two yellow. I'll go ahead and zoom out when I marry these two together. So I'm going to go two to one on this. Um, like I said, two, two yellow to the two peach, or the one peach, and I'm just going to lay this right over top. It really has a really cool look to it, really neat pattern. Um, the name, uh, yeah, whatever, I don't name the stuff, I just die with it. But all I'm doing is just taking this and I'm marrying these two together. That's it. I'm just kind of subduing the yellow, honestly, and I want to get a little bit of orange, a little bit of um, fusion tied into this, and that's good. That's all I'm going to use for the head right there. That's going to be what I'm using there, and then the top's going to be just a straight brown, so I don't have to worry about that. Um, I don't have to worry about mixing that at all. So I'm going to take this, and I want to make sure that I'm getting a good bite on the center of this. So I'm just mixing this in, and now I grab this right in the center. When I grab that in the center and I can see that nothing's moving, that's going to be my tie-in point. Before when I did this, I laid it over, I made a wrap over top of it, and then I doubled it back over and what that did is it made a huge bump and it just wasn't effective well it was effective but it just wasn't a clean wrap all the way through you can see this now there's this nice section it's nice and clean there's no bump right there nothing nothing is obstructed whatsoever and I'm, cl I'm clear to make the next wrap with the brown on top of this. Now, when I tie the brown in, I'm going to I'm going to explain this a little bit further. This is one one thing that is absolutely important when you're doing it this way. Because, you know, I'll explain it further here. Make sure that you get everything, like I said, there's, there's my center section, it's nice and clean, it's nice and tight. This is absolutely important when you do this. There's the one wrap. I don't have, that's all I have is my one secure wrap going right over top of that. I'm going to go one, and I'm pulling tight. If you don't do that, if you do two, three, four, five, and then you pull tight, it's not going to cinch this material down. This thing is as secure as it can be because I did the one wrap in between the material, the one wrap after, and I pulled down on it, and it cinched that material down. Everything on there is clean as can be right now. Now I'm going to advance all the way to the eye of this hook. Like I may be one wrap behind it, and that's it. Same thing, I'm sorting this material through. I'm getting my center point. And I'm coming right up through this. I'm putting the cup right where I want. One, two. Pull tight. 
Now when I pull tight on that subsequent wrap after I loop the material in, what that does with this gel spun, it just pulls tight and it cinches that material up to the hook. And when I do the brown, it's going to be down to the hook. I did so many of these and after I got done and I whip finished and I tied these off, I was losing material and I couldn't figure out why I was losing material. Well, that's because what I did was this right here. What I did, get out of there, is I tied this in, I went secure, one, two, three, boom, and then I pulled it tight. Well, when you let loose of this, your, your thread is relaxing a little bit. Your thread is not as tight as it should be, and now you can pull this stuff up, and it's going to it's going to come undone on you. So right there, I, right there's my cup. I go one, pull that tight. It's secure. It's secure. I mean, I can, I can take a set of vice grips on that and I'm not going to lose any loose material. Everything's clean. Everything's secure. And then I go one, two, three, whip finish. And because I always do two, there you go. But there it is. That's one thing that I will stress about this is I used to use lose a ton of material on this because I would do the one wrap after the cup. I would do the one, two, three, and then pull tight. Make your second wrap the tightest one possible. And that's just going to secure your material in there. Now what I'll do is I'll stand this up. I'm just going to run this toothbrush through there. I'm going to pull this straight down, straight up and down. I'm not going to get too cute. I'm not going to get too fancy on this right now. All I'm going to do is just make a straight cut and start working my way back. Once I get the eyes on there, that's when I'm going to really make the fine cuts. I just want the overall shape right now, that's all. So, now that I have this overall shape, I have my lateral lines, I have the ice wing fiber in there, everything's how I want it. You can see, as I turn this around, you can see these bare spots. You can see the white thread setting right there, and you can see the white thread setting right there. That's right where I want my eyes to be. Before when I did this pattern, I doubled material over. I just had a huge glob. The material would move and the, the eyes would shift on me and it just, the eyes sat where I wanted, they stayed where I wanted it, but it just wasn't as secure as I thought it could be. So I redid a couple of things and this really helped out a lot. Um, what I'm doing now is I'm taking these eyes and I'm just going to glue it right to this bare spot on the thread. All I'm going to do is just set that right over top of it. I'm not doing anything. I'm not securing them right now. I'm just setting them on this gel. Same thing. Get your glue down in between the brown and the yellow. Set them right where you want it. Separate your laser dub. Make sure that the two are setting where you want them. Everything's nice and even. And then go ahead and you can just pinch this down and you'll feel it actually, you'll feel it get a little warm. Make sure that you don't have glue coming out uh, of, the, of the eyes or you'll wind up taking an eye with you on your fingers. And you'll feel it get a little bit warm. You'll feel it set Everything's how you want it now. I mean, it, th those eyes are locked in. They're secure. They're not going to go anywhere. You can see on both sides, they're nice and even. They're nice and clean. And then all I'm going to do on this now is I'm just going to make my final cut. This is pretty much straight up and down. And I'm just going to follow this back. Same thing on the bottom. 
I'll make a straight up and down cut. And I'm just following the, following it back. Everything looks pretty good there. I got one or two pieces that I'd like to get out of the way. And then the last thing that I'll do is because I'm using this white gel spun, I have some white thread right there. I'm just touching this up with the brown. On the underneath side, it's not really a big deal. It gets covered up by that uh, yellow. And there we have it. I have one piece of this shaggy dub that's sticking up through there. But there you go. There you can see there's the updated version of the Rainbow Riffle. This one swims so much better. It's easier to tie, it's quicker to tie than the original that I did and it's so much cleaner because I don't have all of this bulk sitting right here that I was using with the aftershaft for the skirt. It just marries all the way back and it's just such a slick, such a clean fly with this. Like I said, when you get to the front, if you want really bulky pieces of marabou, absolutely use them right there at the front, but don't use them in the back. Um, and this thing will just swim perfect for you, it really will. Um, but, I got one piece hanging out to where I don't want it before I give it one last spin. But there it is, there's the updated Rainbow Riffle Special. If you guys have any questions or comments on this one, leave them with me and if you would like to purchase this fly uh, probably within the next month we're going to have these for sale and um, be able to start shipping these out here hopefully soon but uh, as always questions or comments leave them with me and I'll get back to you. Thanks for watching.